So this is how I gained over 1,000 subscribers on my YouTube channel in 2020. It took me over one year of consistently uploading YouTube videos to finally get to where I am right now. At the time of recording this, I have 1,800 YouTube subscribers on my YouTube channel. 1,000 subscribers. And it took me over a year and almost 300 videos to get there. And if you're now thinking, this is gonna be one of those boring videos that tells you to get more watch time, improve your click-through rate and get better thumbnails, you're wrong. Not entirely, because I'm gonna talk about these things as well, but I'm gonna share five tips with you on how you can grow your YouTube channel today, things that you can do every day to grow your YouTube channel and get more views on your YouTube videos. I'm gonna share those five simple tips with you in a minute. I also have some more advanced strategies, like copying successful people's YouTube tags that are usually not accessible, but I'm gonna show you a way on how to see them. There are more tips in this video so please continue watching until the end because there is a lot of value in there. So I'm an artist and singer-songwriter here on YouTube. I post mainly cover videos and sometimes I do challenges like writing a song for my subscribers or recording something in one hour. I know that many of you guys watching do music as well and have your own YouTube channels as well. So I want to share with you on how I was able to grow my channel so you can hopefully grow even better than me because let's face it there are channels that grow much faster. You can learn from my mistakes rather than having to do the mistakes yourself. If you are already a fan of me, I would like you to write down below what was the first YouTube video of mine that you've ever watched. Comment that down below because that would be interesting. I'm talking a little bit about my growth and my growth wouldn't have been possible without all of you. So tell me what was your first experience with my channel. Right. Let's get into my tips. First of all, this video is not about growing on YouTube very fast to reach 1000 subscribers in just a week. No. It's more about tips on how you can consistently improve yourself, improve your content and improve your YouTube videos to build and grow a real connection with real people that will hopefully watch your videos for much longer. So the first thing that I want to say is Creator Insider, which is actually a YouTube owned YouTube channel, says to get suggested and recommended. YouTube usually prefers videos that already have views and engagement to get suggested and recommended. YouTube usually chooses those videos that already get a lot of views, which is difficult for small creators because where do we get those views from when we start? How to get the first fans. Try to get your first fans. Transition by focusing on ranking high in search. All of my currently most popular videos are popular because they rank high on search. The big major views are in suggested and recommended videos. For small YouTube channels, it's really hard to get those views on your YouTube video there. But usually it's like this. A video performs well in YouTube search, search and then when it gets views consistently from search, one day it's gonna get recommended to a lot of people. Even as a channel with zero subscribers, you can rank high on search. And I'm gonna prove that to you right now. So I have created this second channel that is called Nick Jacobs Guitar because I was thinking about making another channel that focuses more on tutorials and stuff like that. And the first thing I actually uploaded there was a backing track for Lani if this is the last time. And as this song was very popular and is something that a lot of people are searching for, even with zero subscribers, I was able to get a handful of views. It's not a viral video or anything, but it shows you that even if you don't have anybody who is subscribed to you, you can drive in those first views if you focus on ranking high on search. Well, how do you rank on search? We are musicians, we are artists, we wanna make music. That's the thing that we focus on most. But how do we get people to discover us? One of the easiest ways is probably to do covers. If you make covers of songs that are old and that are probably already more popular, it's possible to get in views, especially when the video gets more recommended or anything. But the easiest way to get a lot of views through search is actually to make covers of songs that just came out because quite frankly, nobody else has made a cover yet. And if you're the first one to make a cover of that song, chances are very high that you're gonna get more views because before people make covers, they very often check how other people cover that song. They see how they play it to get the chords and everything. That worked really well for my cover of Modern Loneliness for Love. I think I was one of the first people to cover that. It worked really well on Jeremy Sucker's song here. It continues to work well to this day. Being one of the first people who makes a cover of a song that just came out or maybe make a tutorial of it. Another way to use search to get views to your YouTube video is actually by making content that a lot of people are searching for, but not a lot of people gave answers to that. Keep watching for a secret tip on how to find out what tags other people are using in their videos. <laughs> The click-through rate. Imagine you're searching for something on YouTube and you see, let's say five to six videos. 
which video are you going to click on? Obviously, the one that has the most interesting thumbnail. And second of all, the most interesting title. So if you want to put it really simply, thumbnail and title, and maybe the first two sentences of the description, they make up what a person is going to click. And that makes up the click-through rate. So if your video is more appealing to people that search for this specific search term than other videos on the search term, resulting in a better click-through rate, that is a sign for YouTube that this video is helpful to people. If the click-through rate is really good, but people click away very soon, so the watch time will be low, the engagement will be low, then YouTube will stop recommending your videos and your search rankings will go down. So what I like to say is make clickbaity titles but live up to the clickbait? Make a title that is so clickbait, people have to click. For example, I ordered a pizza and tipped a house. That sounds way too good to be true. And if it was just clickbait, you would be gone and wouldn't watch the video for much longer. But the key here that Mr. Beast is doing on his YouTube video is he actually lives up to the clickbait and actually tips the house, which is crazy. Try to think about how you can apply that for your videos. Use clickbait titles and thumbnails, but actually live up to them. One thing that is also harder for small YouTubers, the click-through rate will probably be better if you have more subscribers because your subscribers, in the best case, they care about you and they watch your videos, so they will click on your video. And, and the click-through rate from the start will be better than somebody who don't has any subscribers and is just ranking in search. So this is, again, kind of favoring bigger YouTubers. But well, we don't want to complain too much because I'm going to show you five tips that you can do right now to get more subscribers and more views on your videos. Number one, when you're just getting started, Ask family and friends to help you out, to subscribe to you and to watch your video. It really helps if you have this boost in your back of some people that click on your videos and that watch them and give you the first likes. Because let's face it, when a video already has some likes, it's much more likely that other people will press like as well. And you press like right now. One, two, three, four. Family and friends. When there are already more likes, then people are more likely to click like. Number two, write constructive comments on other videos. Spam comments. I mean, I mean not spam. What I recommend you doing is write around five to ten comments every day, depending on how much time you have, and actually watch the other person's video and give some constructive feedback. Like, if you like this specific thing that you're doing, for example, I love that Freddie Mercury is in your background, because nobody likes spam comments. Never ask people to subscribe to you. I wouldn't do that. Maybe you can tell them, hey, I made a cover of that song too, after you've actually made a really thoughtful comment. I don't like those spam type of comments. Maybe I've done them in the past. I might be guilty. I'm sorry if I am. Try to provide actual value. What I like to do is maybe if you write 10 comments, do it on five bigger channels than you. They will probably not subscribe to you, but they have a lot of viewers who are gonna read this comment. And if you do a funny comment or a comment that gets many likes, maybe some people will click over to you. And then five comments on other people's videos like cover videos, other music videos, actually listen to it, actually give some constructive feedback and maybe you can even do tip number three with them. Collapse. While this might not be the first thing that you can do instantly and that's something that you cannot do daily, it's definitely something to consider. Making a collab with people of similar size or maybe smaller or maybe bigger channels. First of all, I think that makes the videos more interesting if you have some other faces, especially in music, harmonizing with other people. I've made a playlist where I have all the collabs that I've ever done and I think they're really cool to watch and also I like the idea of building a small community around me, around my channel and helping each other out obviously with people that you actually are interested in. Like I would never follow somebody that I'm not actually supporting, that I'm not actually interested in. But if your content is good and is similar to my content and you like my content too, why don't we collab? Let's collab. Number four. Tell people about it. Many people might probably subscribe to you, but they don't know about it. So make sure to tell people, like don't be obnoxious about it. And the first thing that you tell anybody is, hey, I have a YouTube channel, please subscribe to me. But I think telling people is good because sometimes they might just not know, especially if you're on other social medias and maybe you have a following on Instagram already. Be sure to let the people know. Maybe if somebody DMs you, you can let them know, hey, if you're interested in more content of me, YouTube. Number five, and this is something that not a lot of people talk about. If you do how-to style videos or videos that answer questions, go to websites like Quora or Yahoo Answers. Find a thread where people are searching for exactly what you have made in a video. Maybe it's gonna work, maybe not. It's definitely a strategy to try out. One thing that is really important is to understand your audience and get to know the people that are watching you. Because in the end, the audience is my best friend. 
what YouTube is looking for in recommending your content. Are you providing value or entertainment to people and are you making people happy? I've heard in an interview by a YouTube employee, they try to recommend viewers videos that they're actually interested in and that are going to leave them feeling better than they did before watching that video. Try to serve people that content that will satisfy them the most. Usually it is best to stick to one niche. For me, that is music. And yeah, right now this video doesn't really fit into that category. I know that I'm sometimes a little bit bad at that. I'm posting a little bit too randomly sometimes, but I guess I should focus more on my actual niche. I don't know, I like to create content around other things as well. <laughs> if you really want to grow, focus on one niche only so people know what they get from you. If people are into that niche, they're gonna subscribe to you because they like what you do. And if you keep making content that is around that niche, chances are high they're gonna keep coming back and keep watching your videos and gonna be satisfied after watching your videos, which is what YouTube is eventually looking for. I think many music channels could do this one thing to be able to connect better with their audience, and that is talk. And I'm not saying like me talk for 20 minutes. I'm just saying introduce yourself at the start of the video, maybe for five to 10 seconds, say hi to them, ask them something, how was your day or something like, what was the first video of mine that you've ever watched? If you haven't <laughs> replied to that yet, please write that down in the comments right now. Because I actually want to know. I think showing a little bit of your personality in the videos goes a long way. One guy that I really enjoy for his singing performance is Grant Paris. But at the start of every video, he's talking and just saying, Hey guys, what's up? I'm back. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Something like that. And that's it. Short, simple. Things that he would say. It's authentic. It's him, but it's more than just singing. It's also like feeling like he's talking to you. That's the thing that YouTube is much better at than conventional TV. We feel like we actually know the creators, even if we don't. Try to connect to your audience. And the next thing that's really important is consistency. You never know when your channel is going to take off. So you have to keep on making videos, keep on getting better and keep on understanding your audience better. If you are being consistent, it's very likely that you're going to get more and more subscribers and views. Catherine Manning, for example, took two months to reach her first 10 subscribers. It took her two years to reach her first 1000 subscribers and three years to reach 200,000 subscribers, which is insane to me. The growth that she had in 2019 and 2020 is absolutely amazing. So if you want to learn more about how to grow YouTube, I would recommend you to check her out. She's really interesting. Catherine Manning. Another thing that you can do is analyze people that are successful within your niche. For example, for me, I look at a lot of successful singing channels and I see what different, ah, what different she had what differentiates their style of videos from mine? How often do they upload? How are they visuals? What type of content do they do? Do they do covers or more originals? And I try to learn from them. Like, obviously, I don't copy them. Just copy them. I mean, don't copy them. You don't have to make the mistakes that other people do, and you can definitely learn from their success. So I would recommend you to look a little bit deeper into your favorite accounts and see how did they start, what types of videos did really well on their channel and how can you maybe come up with an idea similar to that, right? Many successful channels actually share this one thing. I think this is true for music much more than it is for any other channel. People that blow up usually are very, very talented and very unique. And chances are, if you have not blown up, I mean, 1000 subscribers is not blowing up either. I'm, I'm a small YouTuber myself. Chances are, we are not good enough yet. And I'm not telling you to quit. I'm telling you to try to get better every day. Try to improve your content constantly. Try to get better at singing. Try to make better recordings. And keep pushing. Consistency is really key. You all know Mr. Beast and he's one of my favorite examples of people that just kept pushing even if nothing was working. He has now got I think over 30 million subscribers. But do you know that it took him two years to reach 1000 subscribers? That is insane to me. He's had his YouTube channel for nine years now I think or maybe eight years and it took him two years to reach 1000 subscribers and an additional three years to get to 5000. That is when it finally started to grow a little bit faster. If he had quit after four and a half years where he was like at 4000 subscribers, he would never be where he is at right now. Even if music or videos or whatever you do on your channel is actually what you want to do. Just keep pushing, keep innovating, keep getting better. Eventually one day it's gonna happen and your channel is gonna blow up. But you need to set the foundation, post a lot of content, post consistently and get a connection with real people, right?
the sun has just come in and it looks really good, I think. So I'm just gonna keep the window open like that. One quick tip on how to get better thumbnails. You can use Canva, for example, which is free. Put some interesting text over it and that already makes it the thumbnail a lot better because text tends to do better on thumbnails than no text. This might be different from music but well try it out yourself. I use Adobe Photoshop because it is really quick and easy for me. It's like $10 per month but it's really worth it for me. I use that a lot in my daily work and it helps me sort of cut myself out, place this white outline around myself and put a different background. Right so I'm gonna show you a quick hack on how to get better tags. Life hack. Let's say you see a cover of an artist and that's getting a lot of views and you're just getting started and you don't know what to put in the tags. I don't have the right answer to what, put, what to put in the tags. I would say don't focus on the tags too much. The description is probably more important. But if you want to see what other successful people put in the tags, if you're already on Google Chrome or Opera, you can basically just click on the video, then click right click and then click on show source code or show website code. Now this looks like a lot of gibberish. But now you can put in keywords and there you're going to see all the keywords that this specific video has used. In this case, this is my video. It uses Nick Jacobs, Nick Jacobs music, blah, 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 blah. Some channel specific tags and then some tags specific to the cover, like the artist, the name of the song, cover, some variations of that search term. You can also use extensions like vidIQ that will show you the video tags of somebody. It's free to use and I like that quite a lot, but you don't need the extension if you just press right click. Unfortunately, it doesn't work in Safari, but yeah. This is my quick tag hack on how to get the YouTube tags on any YouTube video of other creators. Success doesn't happen overnight, especially not on YouTube. It's something that you build up in the long term. You have to keep on improving your content. You have to keep on improving yourself to be able to reach your goals. If you're a music channel, this is one of the most obvious improvements that you can make on your content. Get better sound quality. Many covers get successful even if the sound quality is not good at all, if it's just recorded on an iPhone. It's not an excuse that you don't have the equipment. You can get a lot of views on an iPhone. Mr. Beast reached 100,000 subscribers on an iPhone 5. But if you want to improve on something, try to improve the sound, try to improve your performance, try to get better at singing, at playing, at anything and make it more interesting. Use sound effects in your editing, for example, when text pops up. I don't do that very often because I'm lazy. I'm lazy. All these things, they are for one main goal. The most important thing on a YouTube channel is the audience. For example, things that go well for me are my comment videos. These are videos that are very popular on my channel. They get a lot of likes and views from my subscribers. I did a q and I made videos where I write songs for people's comments. And by the way, please comment down below song ideas for funny songs for the next video. These videos, they help engage your audience and build a connection with your fans and with your viewers, which is really important. They don't necessarily help you to grow the audience, but they help you to make a better connection with the audience. Both of these things are very important. The most important thing on a YouTube channel is the audience. Engage with them, as I said before, engage with them in the way that you are. Talk to them in that style that you talk to your friends. And I would recommend you to especially at the start, reply every comment, give them hearts, try to make an actual connection. I like to think of YouTube subscribers as new friends that I can get to know and that can get to know me in return. Tell them to like and subscribe and be grateful for everybody that does. I think that is really important, especially as a small YouTuber. Cherish everybody that comments, and cherish every new subscriber. And what you can do to get people to comment more, I, at the end of the videos, I always say, I don't know, comment this emoji so I know which people watched until the end. But what you can also do is like do comment challenges. You can get people to ask questions for a Q&A or say, I'm gonna write songs based on your comments, anything like that. Let your subscribers become part of your channel because it's fun and they will enjoy it and be really grateful to be in a YouTube video. One thing that a lot of people think about is quality versus quantity. How many YouTube videos do you have to make to finally get subscriber? And let me tell you this, I've posted daily videos for nine months so that equals around 200 videos. And sometimes I've posted two a day. Yeah. After those nine months, I had 136 subscribers. It doesn't matter all that much how often you post if the content that you post is not interesting at all. My channel actually started to grow 
when I actually started making content that people are interested in and that people are searching for. I uploaded two videos per day in December, almost every day in December, and I made a cover of every single song of Harry Styles. You can check that out. But that was when my channel actually started growing, when I focused on the quality and what people were actually searching for, rather than just making a lot of videos. So it's a double-edged sword. Posting a lot of videos that are really relevant and really interesting and very searchable can help you to get more views, can help you to get more subscribers. But also think about the people that are watching you. Do they want to see videos every day? Do they prefer to see videos, I don't know, twice per week, but then the quality is better rather than posting every day with mediocre quality? That is something to consider. In the end, you're making the videos for your subscribers and if they don't enjoy it and don't click it anymore because you post too often and the quality is not that good, chances are high that YouTube will not recommend it to other people if the subscribers already don't enjoy it. Sometimes it can be good to post a lot of videos. I did that also for Lauf's new album. I think it had like 20 songs and I covered all of them in two weeks. In the first week, your subscribers, they can't listen to all of them. It's a bit too much for them. But sometimes, maybe two to four months later, the real spike in views can come. Especially for me with the Harry Styles covers. In the first week, I gained a decent amount of views. But in February, which is almost two months later, it really started peaking and videos started getting shown much more often and what I'm trying to say is quality I think is more important than quantity but if you're a really small channel push out many videos to see what's gonna resonate and what's gonna go well in search quantity is never bad if the quality is good enough right the final thing that I want to say is I want you after this video to not watch any more self-help videos or YouTube help videos I want you to I don't know write down some YouTube ideas or film something or practice a song that you want to make a cover of because I see this in myself so much. I spend a lot of time telling myself, oh, I wish more people would listen to me. I wish more people would subscribe to me. I wish more people would, I don't know, watch my videos. Nobody's watching me. Thinking about this never helps you. You need to spend more time creating than you spend time bitching about why things are not working. These are just some ideas that I had. If you found this helpful and came this far, please press like and subscribe if you really watch until the year. I can't thank you enough. This is a long video. I hope with my editing I could make it somewhat interesting and hopefully you could learn something new that you didn't know already. If you enjoyed this, comment with a cat piano emoji. Here's one more thought before I exit. You cannot force anybody to subscribe, you can only ask them. But if they don't enjoy the content, they're not gonna subscribe and they're not the right people. Even if they would subscribe and don't watch you, don't force your content on anybody. Don't be the person that spams every video that you do in your WhatsApp chats and in your Instagram DMs. If people are interested in you, tell them about it, but don't force it on anybody. Watch this video.